Removing unwanted objects from your photos is not only great fun because it transforms your photography, but it transforms your shooting style as well because you can go on location and if you see something ugly in the shot that would have previously stopped you from even taking the photo, you can now make a judgment as to what extent you can remove that object in post. We're going to do this on Luminar 4. This was previously the preserve of Photoshop, but now there are other pieces of software, slightly more user-friendly software, dare I say, that has this kind of functionality, and Luminar 4 is one such piece of software. We have a relationship with these lovely people, but we would not bring this to your attention unless we thought it was really, really good. And seeing some of your comments in the likes of the Sky Replacement video that we put out a little while back, I have no problem recommending this piece of software because you guys are right behind it too. So let's jump into that now. Pat Dunnock, thank you for sending us this amazing photo taken on a Mavic 2 Pro, northeast coast of the United States, if I'm not mistaken, absolutely gorgeous. We've done a quick colour grade on this. As you can see, this is the before and this is the after, so we've gone for quite a saturated, contrasty look for the purposes of this exercise. What about that little outbuilding there on the left-hand side? It's a little bit distracting. We've got these nice kind of leading lines of the rocks taking us up to the lighthouse, but our eye is diverted off to the side there to look at that little house. So let's get rid of it. Up here on the top right-hand side, we have all our various tools here. Normally you'll be in here with all the color settings and whatnot, but if we click on this one, Canvas, and we have Erase. Let's click on that and let's get rid of the house. Let's zoom in on the house and make an accurate selection of the piece that we want to remove. So here we have the brush tool and we can paint all over it, or we can use this lasso tool and we'll click all the way around it. And let's just do that since we have a kind of geometric object here. And this is just one way of making the mask, but it's the same outcome at the end of the day. We're making a mask, picking the piece that we want to get rid of. And there you have it a little outbuilding shaped mask that we're going to get rid of. Click erase and let's see what the computer does. In theory, this is gonna do it all for us using artificial intelligence and boom, not too shabby, pretty smart. Let's look at before and after there. There's the house, there's not the house. Ta-da, it's as simple as that. Now I might want to go in there and tidy that up a little bit, but at the most basic level, it really is that easy. If I zoom out a bit, let's go to here, before, after. If you're seeing this for the first time, then your mind might be a little bit blown. How can it be that easy? Well, the software is just looking around that image, looking for similar pixels from out with that mask and pulling it in. It's a little bit similar to Photoshop's content aware fill. Very, very good stuff. Let's try that again on another one of Pat's beautiful photos. For the purposes of this exercise, let's say we want to get rid of this boy, this metal object floating in the water here. So again, up in our canvas tools, let's click erase, zoom in, come down to this piece that we want to remove, and we'll use the lasso tool again, and we'll just draw all the way around that and let's see what kind of outcome we get on this one. This looks a little bit more complicated to me. We've got reflections in the water, we've got clouds. Okay, yep, that's the piece we want to get rid of. Erase. Da, 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 da. Pretty good. I'd say that's pretty good. Let's just zoom out a bit, see what it looks like from a distance. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty smart, actually. That's actually a better result than I was expecting. Let's look at a before and after. Yeah, pretty great. If you look closely at this image, I think the eagle-eyed amongst you will say there's something not quite right. You can see it just looks a little bit jaggy around here. So if you want to smooth that out, there's a tool called Clone and Stamp. We're going to come back to this image. I'm going to demonstrate on this image right here. Dubrovnik, Croatia, location for Game of Thrones King's Landing, and we're going to tidy up some of this using the clone and stamp tool, and then we'll go back and see if we can sort out those reflections on the water. It goes without saying that no amount of post-production is a substitute for taking good photos 
in the first place. You need to learn your craft and learn your skill. We're using post-production to refine already good work, just like we do with our aerial cinematography. So a great starting point is our free ebook from Drone Zero to Drone Hero, 37 tips. Do download yourself a copy of that link down below and we'll send you some other goodies as well with that, like a checklist and a shot list and so on and so forth. And if you really want to get into your drone cinematography and learn to fly like a filmmaker, we have an eight hour drone cinematography masterclass, a very established and successful course that will take you from drone owner to drone pilot to drone cinematographer. I love this photo. Thank you, Bill Brown, for sending it to us, taking on a Mavic Air, and it just goes to show you can get stunning results with pretty much any drone. As long as you can get a decent picture out of it, you can get great results. It's what you do with it that counts. Now, I had a lot of fun tidying up this image, getting rid of all signs of modernity to see if I could get some kind of medieval type image going on. And, and I did, and the before and after results are really quite cool. Let's take this as an example. Let's zoom all the way into here and we want to get rid of this scaffolding. I want to clone these windows and stamp them across here. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the clone and stamp tool. So we click on clone and stamp. And here we go, we've got a nice big view and it says click to set the source. With cloning, we're going to identify a piece of the image that we want to clone and then we're going to stamp it elsewhere in the image. So look at these windows, for example. Let me click here on the top left hand corner of this window here. That is now the source. I want to now paint that in across the rest of this building. All will become clear when I demonstrate. I'm just going to go up here and change the softness of the brush to 50% because I don't want so much spill over the edge of the brush here. So I'm on the top left hand corner of the window and I want to paste it here on the top left hand corner where another window would be. Now you can actually see in that circle a slight indication of what is going to be painted. Now I think that will go about here. Let's do that. Now watch the cursor on the right hand side as I move the paintbrush. It's moving with me and it's painting in everything from the source point and it's moving with me. Look at that. I'm just painting in those windows. Now I've gone too far because the source point now is the original scaffolding and see I'm painting scaffolding. So what I do is I let go and start again. So we go here and we start again and then we paint some more windows and slowly but surely you can just paint in and get rid of all that scaffolding. This is quite painstaking work, but with a bit of practice, you can get fantastic results. Look at that. Let's look at the before and after. Before, after. And that's zoomed in 600%. Let me just zoom out there. Check this. Before, after. How cool is that? Clone and stamp. I was able to get rid of all of these boats. I was able to reconstitute these arches down here, get rid of all the tarpaulins, all the people, and just create a medieval scene. And I had a lot of fun doing it just with clone and stamp in Luminar 4. Coming back to the watery sunset example, let's just see if we can use a little clone and stamp to just soften the edges around the reflections there on the water. We are zoomed all the way into 300%. Let's just click this as our source. I'm going to change that softness down to 50%. I don't want so much spill. And look at that. I'm getting a little view of what I'm about to stamp on. And you can see, see this line down here. Let's just smooth that out. So let's just do one click there. And let's see, one click there. And I'm going to get really precise now. I want to soften out this little bit here. So I'm going to take, this is my reference point. I'm going to move the brush size all the way down to something really quite small. There we go. And let's just soften that out a bit. There we go. I'd say something like that's a pretty good start. I'll move the brush size up a little bit. Again, let's pick this piece here and let's just soften out this area. In fact, that's enough. I think that's enough of that. And let's just take this little edge around here and let's just 
try and just smooth that out a little bit more. I think that might be easier said than done, but let's give it a go. I'll clone this piece up here and see if I can just stamp that on there and see what I get. Look at that. Oh yes, that is so much better. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let's zoom out and let's just see the before and after. Look, look at the way the clone and stamping has just smoothened out those areas, one here and one here. I think that's quite a good improvement actually. Let's do a fairly extreme test here by trying to get rid of this little car, which should be easy, but then let's get rid of this big stone circular wall here. And we'll just use the erase tool. Let's see how we get on with this miraculous erase tool. So let's zoom all the way in. And I'm just gonna use this paintbrush here to paint over the car instead of using a lasso mask. Okay, so there we want to get rid of that, all of that, and click erase. Magical, done. Bish bash bosh. Before, after, car is gone. It's as easy as that. I love this stuff, I really do. It always takes me by surprise. So, let's try something a bit tougher though. Let's get rid of this big circular wall shenanigans. Okay, let's make our brush a lot bigger and let's just paint over all of that and see what we end up with. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's go with that. Zoom out a little bit. Click Erase. Ah, and now you can see the limitations. You can only ask it to do so much before things start to get a little bit silly there. And you can see that it's pulled in elements of this road here to try and substitute the ground. And, and, and we're gonna be realistic with what we can ask of the software. And that's where you need to be a little bit smarter and you'll get into your clone and stamping and paint that out a little bit more sensitively. So let's just try that and see how easy it can be. I'm gonna try and do this really quickly. This way I'm able to follow the lines of the ground as well. And I'll take a little bit of this texture up here. Look at that, done. I'm not a professional retoucher, far from it. And if any of you looking at this eye, then you might think that's horrendous. But to the untrained eye, in what, that took 10 seconds? Before, after. Reasonably good. In fact, I can see there that I've gone and got rid of some wall there. So let's go in and sort that out. So we'll just take this piece. I'll make the brush a bit smaller. Let's just take the line of this across. Tracking all the way across so we can get this little embankment all the way to about there. Okay, zoom out. And you can see how you can start to rebuild the image there. So you can keep the textures and the depth. Okay, folks, it's been a pleasure, as always, taking you through these things. So do stay tuned. Lots more content coming here on the channel. Let us know in the comments how you get on with all of this stuff, and we will see you next time on Drone Film Guide.